Hello and welcome back. Today, we're gonna to take this 20 ton Harbor Freight press and I'm gonna turn it into a 20 ton Harbor Freight brake. And if you're not familiar with what a brake is, it is a device that bends metal. So I am basically going to take a whole bunch of scrap metal that I have laying around and I'm gonna turn it into something useful because I need a way to bend metal so that I can make new window channels for the back of the Ratty Le Mans project. All right, so let's get started on this project and see if we can fail at it. So this is the pile of scrap metal that I have. You can see it is some pretty thick stuff. If you look at the side of this, I don't know what this is. It might be maybe three eighths of an inch. And then over here, I got probably, I don't know, probably more than half inch. I would bet that's three eighths. So I basically have a whole bunch of really thick metal that I've kind of collected over the years. This looks like a thin piece. Here's a thicker one. It looks like 3 16 uh, wall square tubing. And whenever somebody says, hey, Jeremy, you want some scrap metal? I'm like, heck yeah, I want some scrap metal. And then I end up throwing it in my shed. It gets rusty because mice move in and pee on it. And then here I am 10 years later and I'm like, hey, it's a good thing that I took all this scrap metal so that I can build cool stuff. So now I'm gonna take this pile and hopefully make something useful out of it. I'm thinking 20 inches is probably a good number to start with as far as the actual uh, metal break will go. So I'm gonna cut it at 20 inches, see where that takes me. Okay, so I can't cut a straight line. I should have done that differently, whatever. All right, I'll grind it flat and then we'll move on. So I now have this piece in here. And again, it was 20 inches and this is the way it's going to sit once it's all built. Now I'm gonna make a bottom piece out of the same thickness metal and that will be the base plate for what I am going to bend metal into. So I'm gonna make that one 22 and a quarter inches so it's a little bit longer on each end. And this will make sense later why I'm doing this. You can see this one, I've put in the vise differently because I learned from the last time. I'm gonna cut it and it's gonna be straight this time. So let's do this. Okay, let's do a quick comparison to when I cut it this way and I cut it from both sides and I obviously cannot cut a straight line and I cut two lines that didn't match up. This side, mint. Absolutely perfectly straight, totally smooth, lovely. All right, let's see it on the press. Here's the metal sort of in place. And you can see I actually had to lower the, the bottom part of the press it has these dowels in it, so you can lower it really down low if you were doing like a strut or something huge. And I now have a base plate for the metal, and then I have the piece that is going to be pressing down. So next, I think I am going to make the side pieces, or maybe I'll make the top next. I don't know yet. Let me think about that, and we'll see what's in the next, the next part of the video. Something bad just happened. So in my scrap pile, I found this solid steel bar. I don't know what the thickness is, probably somewhere around half inch or three eighths, uh, something in there, probably half inch. And then I found five nuts. I wish I had six, but, and these nuts, fit flawlessly on this rod. There's like no extra gap there, it fits great. So what I am going to do is I'm gonna use this rod and these nuts to connect the metal brake parts together. So let's do that next. So I've just tack welded the nuts in place 
and I cut two seven inch steel bars to slide down them. So this is sort of starting to look like something now. So now I think what I will do is I will probably weld this, the steel bars to this bottom plate. And that way this piece will be able to slide up and down. Well, at least that's the idea. I don't know if it'll actually work or not. Hopefully it will. As long as I can weld everything straight, it should work. You can see that I welded this nut kind of off center and that's because I cut the metal weird and this one is flat against the metal. A little comparison. So I did that so that I could get the, the rod straight up and down. This side is a little bit better. Maybe my welds aren't, but the nuts are fairly even. And again, I was just trying to get the rod to go straight up and down. So now I suppose I will weld the rods to that bottom plate and then I should be able to slide this top thing up and down on it. So let's see how that goes. So this is now starting to look like something. And the next thing I want to do is put a sharp edge on the bottom of this upper piece. Right down here, I basically need to make it a point so that it can push down into metal and hopefully bend it. If I don't end up making a point on that, I'll just weld some angle iron to the bottom of it and that will be my point. But I'm hoping that I can actually kind of cut a point on that with my plasma cutter and maybe a grinder or something like that. So I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but we're gonna give it a shot. So I've just cut this with a plasma cutter and then hit it with a grinder really quick. Looks like complete garbage, but I'm gonna run it across a belt sander and hopefully smooth it out a little bit. So it's somewhat pointy and might actually work. So let's see how this goes. So the next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to cut this piece of steel to be the same width as this one, side to side here. So I, I think it was like 22 inches or something like that. Uh, I might be wrong. Anyways, then I'm going to cut it right down the middle, like so. You're probably asking why the heck I'm gonna do that. And I'm not gonna tell you, because you're gonna have to wait and find out. So this came out like complete garbage but it actually doesn't, that, doesn't matter that much. Uh, I see that it is just in one piece still, and I am just gonna smash it with a hammer and it'll break apart. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with it. Still hot. So there are a couple of life lessons here, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what they are. Now, I cut this with a plasma cutter, which was mistake number one. The reason I say it's a mistake is because my plasma cutter was clearly incapable of doing this, and yet I continued. And you can see my line is not even close to straight, but that actually doesn't matter so much because I'm not actually gonna use that edge. What I am gonna use is the flat edge of each side. And, you know what happens when you heat up metal? It warps. So check this out. Hold on, let me line these suckers up. Okay. Look at the gap on this end and the gap on that end. 
And then if you squeeze one side together, look how big the cap is on the other end. Now these things were perfectly square before, and now I have, I don't know, an eighth inch on each side, maybe a little less than that, maybe a sixteenth. So now what I have to do is I have to grind these down until they're flat again so that I can use them. But I'm actually not going to do that yet. First, I'm going to get them mounted to that because I want to make sure they're going to mount to that and they're going to do what I think they're going to do. And then I will take them back off and I will make them flat. So let's grind these a little smoother. Maybe take off some of this hackery so it doesn't look quite as embarrassing. And then I'm going to drill some holes and I'm going to mount them to that on the bottom. And hopefully we'll have a semi-functioning break. All right, let's drill some holes. So I've just notched this piece right here and right here. And then I notched that one as well. The way I did it was I drilled a hole. Well, I see, I'll just show you. Probably should have got it on camera, but you know, one thing leads to another. So I clamped these together and then I drilled a hole through it. And then I cut down into it with the bandsaw on both ends. Now, bear with me. This is some serious hackery. Don't make fun of me. Well, you can if it doesn't work. If it does work, then you can't complain. All right, so I have now put these in place and I just used a punch to punch some spots where I need to drill and tap because I am going to put some bolts in right here and right here and then on the back side. And then as this goes down, it will hopefully hopefully bend metal into a V-shape, but we won't know until we try it. So let's get some bolts in and then we'll try it out. So I think I'm ready for a very early test. All right, so we have a semi-flat piece of steel here. Pop it in there. See if we can put a bend in it. Well, I guess we're all impressed by that, aren't we? So you can see this has a 90 degree bend in it and it looks pretty great considering it's a crappy old piece of metal. And the fact that I don't have a sleeve for the top of this, the pins aren't welded in and the plates on the bottom are loose and have bolts in them that are way too long. I am shocked that this worked. So I think once I get all of those other things sorted out, this is going to be a pretty useful tool. As ugly as it is, it's totally functional. And this is going to allow me to basically make 90 degree bends in metal like this thick and hopefully be able to make some parts for my cars. So I'm calling this a win, guys. Total win. All right, so I guess I'm gonna wrap up this video for today. I'm still waiting on the sleeve for this and I'm out of welding gas. So I'm kind of dead in the water at this point. The good news is this thing works. It's real ugly and it works. So hopefully the next time you see a video, I'll have the sleeve welded on, this thing will be functional, and I will be able to actually make parts for the ratty muscle cars. So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this was entertaining for you. It was entertaining for me at least making this. And be sure to subscribe to my Instagram at ratty muscle car. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Be sure to subscribe, tell your friends, ring the bell, all that stuff. And have a great day. We'll see you later.